Evening guys. Well, I finally decided um, it was time for me to join the 250 gram revolution and well, I got myself a Zod 250 gram. But um, the bad news, mine weighs 261-ish grams and I kind of, well, <laughs> I'm not going to change it because it's not worth it. But I tell you what, this is a lovely, lovely model. Now, let's give you a quick idea of, well, first off, why I didn't reach the 250 gram limit and why you may, and also a little rundown on the build I did. I'll talk about what I've done. Now, first and foremost, you know, they, I, I had the version which supplies the co-pilot system, which obviously sits in the air and does all the return to home and everything for you. But um, the thing is, is that, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of straying into lots of different types of flight controllers. And I'm using iNav and Betaflight pretty much exclusively across the board, largely because, well, ah, there it is. It all talks with the, um, the, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the link, I can't remember the name of it. The um, Mavlink, that's it. It all talks with the Mavlink to the tracker. And I can do that easily. And obviously if I went down the route of using the co-pilot system, it wouldn't talk with Mavlink and then I wouldn't be able to track with this. So, well, that's how it goes. But um, yeah, you know, so end result, I ended up going for a Matic F411 wing board on here. Um, I did originally plan to do a Furious F35 controller, but there was absolutely no way it was going to fit. It just, it was too big. So um, buried under here is an F405 wing, which um, it won't be coming out easily because it's stuck in there and all the wires and things are all soldered in. And that's great. And then um, primarily the reason I missed the mark on the weight limit is because, you know, whilst these are great and you can fly around, I like having HD footage. And um, I ended up putting a run cam split up front, which um, just adds that little bit of weight. And well, it doesn't meet it. And to be honest, if you look at what is supplied in the kit, the way they get to the 250 gram is putting a little sort of tiny whoop style camera VTX combo on the front. It's okay. <laughs> But, you know, it's not that good, and it, it kind of lets down the experience. So, you know, I, I kind of wonder, and this is just me wondering, is maybe the manufacturers will realize at some point that what they could do on things like the wings is like we used to do. You have a big cutout and some film over it. Because I reckon I could probably save that 20 gram just by doing some neat cutouts, a little bit of solar film over it, and I'll probably shave off 10 grams off each wing and be within the limit. You know, to me that seems like a logical thing, but these days in the ore foam world no one wants to do a built-up structure, so that's how it goes. Um, now, other things you may notice on my build, I've got a tiny little XC style, I think it's a true RC singularity on here, a little stubby. I normally go for long ones just to get some clearance, but in this case I went for a short one because I want the whole thing to be compact. Um, my fins, I've gone kind of a little bit off counter here because the instructions say to lean these fins inward but honestly i just did not like the look of it it's the inwards thing just doesn't work for me so i've done it outward tilted and you know beyond basically just not being an utterly perfect fit it fits almost perfectly if that makes any sense and then um yeah it's good internally you can see my end results i've got um a little 2s lithium iron on here which um is pretty much from my Strix Goblin, the little Nano Goblin, and I know that should give me, because the motor specs and proper are all very similar, 35 to 40 minutes of air time, that's quite good. Matek VTX over here, sitting at 200 milliwatts so it doesn't get too hot. And finally I've got the DVR board down here. Um, you'll actually notice that the battery isn't all the way forwards, I've had to put a little foam insert here, and that's just because I find that the stock CG on these things, and you can see I've, I've got it on here, but it's kind of, there you go, I actually balance it just maybe three or four mils behind. And the, the reasoning here is what I've found is when you cut the power, you know, down goes the nose. And you find Zod have designed these things with a forward CG to make it easy to fly. And it means that you'll damn near never stall it. You know, it's the same scenario on the other Zod I've got on the other side of the shed there. But um, yeah, it's kind of, you know, if you move it back just ever so slightly, the plane gets a little bit more responsive. It can stall, but you know, I come from line of sight days. I don't need a model to be 
so inherently stable, I'm capable of flying it. So for me, moving it back just kind of makes it nicer. It feels better in the air to me. And then, um, what else? You know what? It's a sweet little plane. It flies beautifully. Um, you know, I, I was on my maiden flight and I, I handed over the transmitter to one of my flying buddies, Dan, and he couldn't believe how locked in the model was out the box. And this is just using the default sort of, I know, I think it's an 800 mil or 900 mil template that they've got. Plug that on. It works, <laughs> you know, it flies locked in. I haven't run auto-tune, I haven't done anything like that. It just flies great. It's, it's a nice little pocket plane. I'm just, my only niggle, it just doesn't hit the 250 gram mark, but that's actually kind of my own fault because I've built mine a little bit more beefy because that's where I like it. And it doesn't bother me too much. You know, at the end of the day, uh, this thing will fly with full antenna tracker, everything, 40 minutes airtime. I could go a blimmin' long way with that, and I guess that's that's all part of the game. It's lots of fun. So hey, I'm going to pop up a little bit of flight footage showing you how it performed on its maiden flight, and um, hopefully you enjoy it. I think it's a fantastic little model. You know, I guess I guess uh, the only little point I would make, and it's it's the small negative. It's a lot easier to build the slightly bigger dot, just because everything fits a bit easier, but. You know what, if you're an experienced builder and you're going down the iron route, this will work. You know, if you really want to shave the weight, drop a 20 by 20 flight controller and you'll be fine. You'll get well within it, it's not difficult. Flies great, can't complain. Enjoy the footage guys, cheers.